Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today folks, I'm going to share with you yet another one of my lasagna recipes that uses some different ingredients including what I'm going to call an enhanced bechamel sauce. It's enhanced because I add a secret ingredient. I'm going to get into that as we put together this beautiful lasagna. Let's get started right now. So our very first ingredient, we're going to put in our pan five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Four and five. There we go. And we'll put our stove up to medium. And what we have here, I went ahead I got one carrot and what I did folks is I sliced this carrot and then I diced it. So we're going to add one carrot sliced and diced. I also went and got one celery rib and I removed the, um, the outside, let's call them strings. I removed the little strings from the outside uh, of the celery and then I sliced it and diced it. Okay, so we have one rib sliced and diced. Then I went ahead with an onion and I also sliced thin one onion, one medium sized onion, and then I diced it. And I'm using a red onion, but you could use a sweet onion, a cooking onion, uh, doesn't matter, onion of your choice. Uh, then what I went ahead and did was I got some mushrooms. I washed them first. I always wash them. This is eight ounces of mushrooms, just one of those little, you know, one of those little containers. And I went ahead and I sliced and I diced the mushroom as well. So eight ounces of mushrooms goes in. That is going to create the base for our main sauce. I, I mentioned an enhanced bechamel. Uh, we're also going to use a tomato sauce as well. Now I'm looking at all these ingredients and what I'd like to do, I'm looking at my bottom, I would like to add two more tablespoons of olive oil. One and two. So that'll give us seven total and that's because uh, the onion and these ingredients are going to absorb a bit of that olive oil. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this up to temperature on medium heat and we're going to saute this for probably 10 minutes. A little stir, mix it up, and let it continue cooking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some baby spinach. Uh, what I have here is 11 ounces, which is equivalent to 312 grams of baby spinach. We're just going to add that right in, and this is going to all cook down. It's now time to break out the wooden spoon, folks, and start to mix in that spinach. With all those beautiful ingredients we've started already, you can see how it's already cooked right down. It will continue to cook down as it heats up here. And what you want to do is just get everything mixed in together. Once it's cooked down, mix it in as best as you can. Try to get it evenly distributed. And we're going to let this cook up for another up to five minutes. So at this point we have not added any salt, so I'm going to add a little bit of salt here and here you add salt to taste. Okay, and now folks it's time to add our meat. So what we're doing here is we're creating the base for our tomato sauce. So what I have here is what I call my triple mix. Lean ground beef, pork and veal comboed. Okay, and it is 1.124 kilos which converted is about two and, a, two and a half pounds. So we are going to add, we're going to add that triple mix. The triple mix, what I call triple mix, gives a fantastic flavor to your lasagna. If you can't find the mix, the combo of pork, veal, and beef, by all means just use lean ground beef. But if you can find the combo, it's going to add a lot more flavor. Okay, now, the beef that we just added, that's going to need salt as well. And I like to, when it comes to meat, add up about a half a teaspoon uh, per pound. But I'm going to start off here with just, just one teaspoon because what we'll do is we've got to add a little bit of salt as well to our, to our tomatoes. And at the end of the day, we're going to taste it and we're going to go salt to taste. So I'm only going to do one teaspoon of salt. But again, you do salt to your liking. 
And again, take that beef, uh, I should say that, <laughs> that beef mixture, and work it in to our base. And what we want to do here is just brown the beef. Let's get it browned and cooked and mixed in and incorporated with all the other ingredients. So as you can see here, folks, making lasagna is really easy. You just prep your ingredients, make your sauce, and then you do the assembly. Uh, it is so easy and it's fun. At the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. And you're making a beautiful, beautiful lasagna for you to enjoy. What else can you ask for? Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to work this in and we're gonna cook this, continue cooking on medium heat until such time that our ground meat is all browned. And yes, I am happy with how I have mixed this together. And yes, you know it, when you think you've mixed enough, just mix a little bit more. <laughs> Let's get everything spread out nice and evenly and consistently. There we go with our ground meat now all browned. Uh, we're going to be we're going to add our tomato but before we do so this is starting to get full and to take a little pressure off my pot i've got another one here so i am going to take half of this ground meat mixture and we'll put it right into that other pan including some of the juices now it's time to add our tomatoes and you could use either a passata or you could use whole tomato or chunk tomato any tomatoes that you happen to have both of these are excellent. Uh, they're both 796 milliliters or 28 fluid ounces. I'm going to start off with the whole uh, San Marzano tomatoes. And with just a hand immersion blender, I like to just blend that up and grind up all those tomatoes and make one passata. And there we go. And scrape the inside get all that beautiful tomato sauce out and this actually adds a beautiful beautiful flavor I love these San Marzano tomatoes right from Italy folks it's what I use on my pizzas it's beautiful okay there's our first can okay and in goes our second can there we go that's starting to look really good and of course it's sm <laughs> smelling really good in here too the aromas are amazing okay now, once that's in, I had to lower that. You want to lower to, to a simmer, put the stove on low, otherwise it's going to start to splatter, like you could probably see that one already started, so I had to lower it right away. So you want to cook this on maybe medium low. There we go. Now this, uh, again, we added those tomatoes. We did not add salt. So we're going to let this cook for a while, but we're going to have to add more salt. And I'm going to suggest here as well, salt to taste. So whatever, whatever works best for you, um, that's how much salt you're going to add. So we're going to let this now simmer and cook for at least 30 minutes. So if you're in a hurry, after 30 minutes, you can start to use your, your sauce. But my, my preference is to let it sit and cook on a low heat for up to one hour and if you want put a lid on it let it rest and just you can stir it every so often but uh, like I say 30 minutes it'll be ready I like to let it sit just a little bit longer up to an hour now as we're cooking what you want to do is add your salt to taste and you continue to taste it as you cook along and at this point I'd also like to add a tablespoon of or dried oregano that adds a beautiful beautiful flavor to the sauce and we're going to work that in as well and then as this cooks we'll let it cook for a while longer and then we'll do the little taste test and we'll see if it needs more salt now you notice I did not add any black pepper. Uh, you can add black pepper if you'd like as well. I've just been avoiding it lately. So let's just say at this point, you could also add black pepper to taste if you like. With our tomato sauce is now almost done. We're gonna start making our bechamel sauce. So we're gonna start off by adding a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons of butter to a frying pan. And let's get that melted. 
That's also equivalent to about, a, that's a quarter cup, which is equivalent to about a half a stick of butter. And I am using salted butter today. To make the bechamel sauce is very, very easy, folks. In fact, as Laura would say, it is so very easy. <laughs> okay, and there we have it. Our butter is now melted. So to our melted butter, we are gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Okay, and what you do is just blend that in, incorporate the flour in with the melted butter. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. And you're more or less stirring constantly while that's cooking. We can drop it down to a medium low heat. And after a minute, we are going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So basically a pinch of nutmeg that goes in. And now we're just going to remove this from the heat and we're going to add slowly add some milk. I have 12 ounces of milk, which is one and a half cups of milk. Okay, and again, we're gonna bring that up to temp and we're gonna now continuously stir this for about three minutes. Okay, I can see we're just starting to come up to temperature now and that's what you want because this we wanna get this sauce thickened up. So, like I said, we'll, we're gonna let it run for about three minutes and see where we're at. So it has now been one and a half minutes, so we're halfway there and you can see how it's thickened up nicely. And you remember I said we're gonna make an enhanced bechamel sauce? Well, bechamel is one of the five key uh, French sauces. And because we're making an Italian lasagna, we're gonna make this sauce a little more Italian by adding two tablespoons of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Yes, that's how folks we are going to enhance the bechamel, which gives a, it's going to give an even extra flavor now with that Parmigiano Reggiano added there. Amazing, amazing flavor, folks. So that's our enhanced bechamel. So we'll give it another minute and a half, and then this sauce will be ready. Those sauces will be ready, and all we have to do then is put everything together. A little bit of assembly and that's the fun part building the lasagnas so it's been three and a half minutes and I'm liking what I'm seeing and in fact I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of that beautiful Parmigiano Reggiano and then we'll call it a day this sauce will be ready so I brought it up to three tablespoons of Parmigiano Reggiano and I've been cooking this over a medium heat all along and stirring it constantly so looking at my Stopwatch there, it's been about four minutes now. So we're gonna stop it, it's got, it's got a nice consistency to it. We got the thickness we want, the flavor is gonna be amazing. So let's shut that down, shut down our tomato sauces and let's put this lasagna together. So for your lasagna, you're gonna want a casserole dish or an oven proof, oven ready dish. I have some beautifully grated mozzarella cheese there and we're gonna put this together very, very nicely. Now we are going to use oven ready noodles. So uh, these are egg pasta. Uh, they are oven ready, so you don't need to cook them. Okay, there's different brands. This one is also oven ready. They are a pleasure to use. If you want to use homemade pasta, um, of course I have a video, I'll put a link here. You could check out the homemade pasta. But for today, folks, we're going to use these oven ready lasagna egg noodles which is as close or as close as you're going to get to homemade noodles. These things are fantastic. So um, start off with a layer of your tomato sauce on the bottom of your uh, casserole dish. Okay, there we go. And then these are really easy to use. Just place them down and start making your layer of pasta noodles. Now, because I have a little bit of room here, these will break. So I will take them and just crack them. There we go, and I fill in that spot. Now, first thing we wanna do now is add 
our bechamel sauce. And all you want here is about um, a, a tablespoon or so per, per noodle. And with the bechamel, because we made lots of tomato sauce, we might need to make another batch of bechamel sauce. But I, I like to make one batch uh, as we go, along as we go. Uh, that way it stays nice and warm and, and doesn't solidify. So, yeah, maybe a tablespoon and a half per, per noodle. How's that? Okay. So a little bit of bechamel. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to sprinkle some freshly grated mozzarella cheese. Don't be shy. Okay, we are also going to use ricotta cheese. Now I like to get my ricotta, if you can find them uh, in, wrapped in like a wax paper, that to me is the best because it's, it's drier. Um, and less, um, let's say it's more crumbly and it's going to have a lot more flavor. So this ricotta, as you can see, nice and dry. So we've added our mozzarella. Now we're going to add our ricotta. Now, of course, if you can't find it in the wax paper, uh, obviously get it in the, in the tubs, but try not to get the, the creamy, try not to get the creamy one. Try to get it as, as more in its natural state as you possibly can. So you're just going to sprinkle a little bit of ricotta cheese on top, and then we're gonna add that beautiful meat sauce. A nice layer of meat sauce. Okay, and put a little bit on each noodle. And then we add more noodles. So we're gonna add, we're gonna continue layering this. And again, depending on your uh, dish, how deep it is or how shallow it is will determine how high you can go with the layers. And it doesn't really matter how high you go with the later layers. You can have a really thin lasagna or you could have thick lasagna. And I should have mentioned, as you can see here, you don't have to cover the complete noodle with the bechamel because it's going to, as it cooks, it's going to nicely, nicely spread over top of, uh, of all those noodles. So don't, don't worry about it. Remember, cooking is not stressful. Cooking is fun. Just put things together and it's going to turn out amazing. And we're on our last layer. Again, we're just going to do the same process and we're going to finish off with the mozzarella on top. A little bit of ricotta. Okay, and now we're going to add our meat sauce on the top. There we go. And now you want to finish with the mozzarella on the top. And again, we're going to put a little bit extra here. There, we're going to have it just like that. Oh yes, this is going to be so good. Okay. And that, folks, is how we're going to finish this off right there. Topped with mozzarella cheese. Let's take a look at our beautiful beautiful lasagna right there. This folks is ready for the oven or for the freezer. You could freeze lasagna. It freezes very, very nicely and cooks up just as beautifully as if it was fresh. And this folks, unfortunately, no taste test for me today. This one is going in the freezer and it's going to come out when all my family comes over, we're gonna have a nice Sunday dinner with a beautiful lasagna. I'll take this out of the freezer and we're gonna cook that up. Speaking of cooking, 350 degrees, preheat your oven to 350, let it cook for at least an hour with the lid on. If you wanna take the lid off and cook it for another 10 minutes, that's perfectly fine, but you want at least an hour lid on at 350 and you're gonna enjoy yourself a beautiful, beautiful, homemade, we didn't make the noodles, but homemade lasagna. You know exactly what's in here, 100% goodness. The mix of the meat sauce, the red meat sauce with the tomatoes and the enhanced bechamel with those two different cheeses is gonna make for a phenomenal, phenomenal lasagna. I truly, folks, hope you give this recipe a try. As you know, I love it when you tune in, but I love it more when you actually 
make the dishes and enjoy them. That makes me the happiest. I want to thank you for joining me on today's episode of Cooking with the Koyas. And until next time, buon appetito.